Hi everyone and welcome to ABG Investor Days. My name is Nikola Kilanowski and uh, I'm an equity research analyst here at ABG. Uh, with us today we have the CEO of Bambuser, Mariam Garimani. She will present to us uh, her company and uh, then we'll have an opportunity for a Q&A. And uh, with that said, I leave the floor to you, Mariam. Thank you. Very nice to be here uh, and welcome uh, everyone. Um, my name is Miriam and I'm the CEO of Bambuzer. Uh, I'm going to give you a brief company overview. Uh, before I jump into the presentation, I would like to start with a video. We pivoted into video commerce or live video shopping three years ago. And this is a glimpse of what we have been up to the past three years. So I hope you enjoy it. Bambuzer is a global leader in video commerce. Uh, we work with 350 brands uh, across multiple markets that leverage our SaaS platform on a daily basis. We have offices in Stockholm, New York, London, Paris, Tokyo, and Turku. We have customers in over 45 countries. Uh, and today on International Women's Day, I'm extremely proud over that I'm a minority female CEO and that 62% of female senior management is female at our company. Our ARR um, in Q4 landed on 149 million SEC. We grew our ARR year over year with 57% and our cash balance ended up at 379 million SEC in end of Q4. So as I said, we pivoted into video commerce or live video shopping um, in January 2020, more or less three years ago. Uh, and as you can see, we have had an amazing, strong AR momentum um, with a very stable growth quarter over quarter. Looking at the market opportunity, um, we're addressing a quite large market that is estimated the total addressable market of 258 billion Swedish crowns. And what you saw in the video in the beginning, it's quite easy what we do and the problems we solve. Approximately 80% of all internet traffic, IP traffic, by 2025, and that is not too far away from today, will be video. And what that tells us is that internet is becoming video and shopping will over time become video. So the evolution from e-commerce that has been very static, text, picture, buy button, will evolve over time. And that's where we come in and make a huge difference for the brands. If you look to our core market, when we started off three years ago, we more, more or less opened the door for all brands, enterprise, mid-segment and the long tail. And looking at today, I would say that we're more or less addressing the enterprise market because that's where we see that we're sticky and where we can expand. And if you look to that market, that one is worth 9.3 billion SEC. We work with two solutions, starting off with our first go-to-market product, one to many. So to explain this product quite easily, um, you have a brand, you have a website. On your website, you have a lot of landing page, pages, PDP pages, where you're trying to explain your products. 
Um, what we do is that we add a video on your website. The video is interactive. You can chat, you can like, you can do polls, you can add to cart. So there's a lot of interactivity going on instead of this very static uh, HTML page. The player is Bamboozer player, but it's always white labeled. So you will never see Bamboozer. It will be, uh, if it's a Fendi or it's a Farfetch, that will be the player, how it's designed. Then we have a dashboard that's where you log in as a customer, you create your event, you add URL drop, you, you drop the URLs of the products you want to show. And then how you stream it, it's easy, it's, it's low cost production with high quality. It's a Bamboozer app that you download and that app is more or less your camera. So you can go live more or less from anywhere in the world to, with very easy, easy and accessible to very low cost. We have a native checkout, so when we added something to the cart, we'll push it to the native checkout of the brand, so we don't touch any data or transaction. We are platform agnostic. We work with all e-com platforms, and we also do a social media multicast, which means that if you stream a show, you can also stream that show into social media that has open video APIs. So, the numbers which is always important. What do we deliver in terms of value for our customers? So today when you go to a website, you stay approximately around two minutes. If you're great, more, most website has less than one minute traffic. When you get them into the video, they actually stay for eight minutes, uh, which is more or less uh, double or three times double the time that they spend on your website normally. They engage with you. So one third of everyone, 30% of everyone that comes into the video, they actually engage with your brand. They will chat, they will like, they will add to cart. And the average conversion rate in, in the video is 10%. And I, if you know e-commerce, if you have a 1% or 2% conversion rate, then you're an expert. So I think this is where we see um, we make a huge difference for the brands. Moving over to one-to-one, -to -one. so this product was, uh, we launched it in uh, at the end of 2021, so it's a younger product in our product suite, and it actually grew out of the one-to-many. We had a lot of customers that asked, but can we have the same experience, but we want to have it with only one client. The one-to-many is one or two people streaming to many, and we will just have a very uh, how to say, a close conversation with one customer. So we developed this product and went to market. So one-to-one -one is a drop-in or a scheduled meeting. I think everybody knows FaceTime. So imagine FaceTime with interactivity, add to cart and check out. Um, once again, it's the same features there. It's a native, uh, native ad and check out. And we connect to more or less any booking or CRM system today. So this is about giving the customer the same experience as you would walk into a physical store in the comfort of your home or wherever you want and want to do the shopping. Looking into the numbers, the average a meeting time is 14 minutes. We actually double the average order value versus online. So if I go to, uh, example, uh, Shell & Company, that is one of our customers, to their website, I would actually double that average order value in a call, um, in a one-to-one -one call. And the average conversion rate is 64%, and I think we all know that is unheard of today. So amazing numbers and amazing results using both features. Uh, going into our business model, <clears throat> we uh, have three different tiers. We have light, standard, and enterprise. And when we sign a customer, we always have a one-time fee. This is for onboarding and startup, and they pay it upfront. Then we have the recurring SaaS fee. Most of our licenses are run on a 12-month basis, and we invoice them three to 12 months in advance. Then we have a variable fee for both products. For the one-to-many, it's streamed hours, and for one-to-one, -one, it's user and agents. And this is uh, mostly invoice quality in arrears. Looking at Bamboozer, we have divided our, um, uh, our market into three regions, so Americas, EMEA, and APAC. And we have strong partners and brands that we're working with across all three regions. Going in a bit into our KPIs and financials. So our NRR, our net revenue retention, uh, is very strong in the enterprise segment. And if you look to our top 20 accounts or enterprise accounts, 
we we know now that when we land an enterprise client, we have a strong foundation of upselling on them. We have a, a bigger churn in, in the long tail, and I will talk more about that soon. But we see great uh, potential in a land and expand with enterprise accounts. If you look to ARR by customer, uh, we grew this ARR, average ARR per customer growth with 38% year over year. Um, we went down a bit in Q4, and that's due to the churn in customer groups, uh, especially in Q4. But overall, year over year, we're growing the average AR per customer group. AR by region. So EMEA is our largest region by AR, uh, followed by Americas and then APEC. And the growth in Americas and APEC is primarily driven by fashion and home and garden. And in APEC, it's driven by beauty and consumer electronic verticals. AR by product, as I said, the one to many was our first product, our go-to-market, and stands for, of course, the chunk of our ARR. We believe that one-to-one -one has a huge potential, and even if it's small, it grew by 600% year-over-year in Americas and 1,000% in APEC. So we see a huge potential for this product growing the next coming years. We have a gross margin of 83% in our SaaS business. Our professional services have a gross margin of 2%, which supports the SaaS business. With that, I say thank you, and uh, over to you. Hey, well, time for some Q&A then, and thank you for the presentation. Um, I thought perhaps if we could just start by taking a look at perhaps the unit economics. Could you explain how the economics work of Ambusa in the context of both one-to-one uh, -one and one-to-many in the context of revenue generation and you know, customer acquisition costs? So I would say that we have a land and expand uh, strategy when it comes to um, customer acquisition and, and the unit economics. So normally we we um, put all the, how to say, staff costs, marketing costs, acquisition costs, and we take that cost upfront when it, when it occurs. Um, then when we sign the customer, and uh, normally our agreements run on 12 months, we expect to have the customer, um, uh, we expect to have um, the customer to stay for several years. And um, as our source business have a, quite great gross margin. So once again, we see that we can, when we land the customer, we have three possible ways of upselling on the customer. Mm. So it's by brand, by region, or by adding one of our products. Um, so, and I think that applies to both one-to-many and one-to-one. -one. Yeah, so we'd say that they have roughly a similar gross margin, yes. one could say, uh, yes. going forward at the very least. Yes, yes. Okay, and if we take a look at the landscape the way it is today in the West, mm. uh, not China. No. <laughs> um, could we say that there is a clear leader or is the landscape still um, developing? So I think it's still developing a lot. And I think that we, we're, so, you know, we're in a category where we're building the category as we're growing it. So it's mm. not a category, category that has existed for many years, as we all know. So I think that if you look to, to the competition, we have a lot of smaller competition in all markets, I would say, no matter which market we're in. We don't see uh, anyone uh, that is like a bigger competition, but we, we actually welcome competition and more companies to come into this vertical because as you see, the market is huge. Mm. I think it's quite healthy with competition and, and we are going to see this market grow or this vertical grow a lot. Uh, but I would say out of, the, out of the competition we have, we are the leader in the West in terms of video commerce for both products. Mm. So uh, with increased competition, we will get perhaps some network effects that will help the entire industry. And also perhaps. adaption and consumer mm. adaption. The more consumers that are facing video on an e-commerce or the one-to-one -one solution, the better it is for Bambooster because we can grow our business. Mm. But I would say if you look to sauce, sauce competition, we have the smaller ones. But then you can, of course, look at you know, Amazon. You have you know, all the social platforms that are also mm. betting quite a lot on video and, and social commerce that will come over years. Mm. And perhaps if we take a look at some of the uh, uh, the KPIs, mm -hmm. you grew ARR by 57% on, on an FX neutral basis. Mm -hmm. um, what sort of customers mm -hmm. 
did you add? Which which types of customers churned? What did the addition look like? How did the enterprise segment perform? Could you go in a little bit on detail on that one? Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, when we opened our doors for for uh, live video commerce uh, three years ago, uh, as you all know, COVID hit. Mm. So we a lot of the customers that are churning in the long tail, we call them the the the, the COVID customers, because. Retail was shut down and everybody needed to find something how they could like, you know, to still sell to the customers. Mm. And and they would adapt and into video commerce because that was a great solution to keep the sales up, even if the stores were closed. I would say if you you look at the three different tiers, that the big churn that we're seeing is is those customers that didn't really have the strategy or the bandwidth. They just jumped into it because they just had to find a solution. I think where we see great adoption and great growth is the mid-segment and the enterprise segment. Mm. For being successful doing this, you need to have a team that actually creates content. We're not a technology that you adapt and it works by itself. We sell a technology that you need to add human people to create mm. content. And I think if you don't have the resources, and that's where we see, if you don't have resources or traffic to your website, it's going to be pretty tough for you to be successful. Mm. But if you have a, a, a strong brand, a lot of traffic, and resources, then you're going to be super successful as we saw in the numbers. You can really convert and, and you know, see amazing numbers within e com mm. But I think where we are seeing strong momentum and focus and where we see great upsell and cross-sell is it within the S enterprise segment um, and not in the long tail because adaption will come over time, but the adaption is not really there and they don't have the resources and budgets to really go all in on video commerce as of today. Mm. And for those enterprise uh, customers that do adapt uh, Bambu, so they, they generally see a high ROI would be ultimately the, the thing that they would look at. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's a mix of, of sales, marketing, and brand. That's that's more or less what we sell because it, mm. the hard fact is that you can measure sales. So it's not a nice to have, it's actually a must have. A lot of customers today in retail, as you know, the, the macro is pretty tough. They're sitting on a lot of inventory. So how do you ship inventory in an easy way? Um, so I think that it's it's we, we really have um, customers that, that understands and really adapted and we can see amazing, you know, results. Uh, but it's going back to you have to have the resources and then the budgets and also have it as a part of your strategy, your commerce strategy going forward to be able to be successful. And if we um, move on, I guess, to um, the TikTok partnership with yeah. you, which you announced in yeah. uh, relation to the Q4 report. Yes. Um, could you just explain you know, what should an investor take away from such a partnership? How will you benefit from it? Mm. So uh, TikTok was uh, why we why we press released this was because it was regulatory mm. um, and uh, the partnership with TikTok is about us uh, finding a business between the companies. So as we all know, they are betting quite big on social commerce in the West, and um, the partnership is about us helping their merchants to go live on TikTok. TikTok is only a platform. Uh, Bambuzer is a SaaS company, so we have the data. We know how to make the brand successful. So they, the partnership is about them um, giving us the merchants that are interested in, in going live and wanted to uh, invest or add video commerce to their strategy. And what we get in, in advance is that we can actually sell the Bambuzer platform to them as we help them to go live on TikTok. Mm. And then our vision is, of course, long-term to be able to stream all shows that our customers are streaming into TikTok with all the interactivity and all the checkout parts over time. And then perhaps if we take a look at your offering, uh, you launched uh, One Too Many on uh, Salesforce App Exchange. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the end of Q4. Um, can we expect this to be the main sales channel going forward? And could you perhaps explain the rationale behind using Salesforce to distribute your uh, service? Of course. Um, so we see Salesforce as a very strong and, and strategic important partner for Bambuzer going mm. forward the next coming years. Uh, so the partnership with its uh, Salesforce uh, Commerce Cloud, which is their e-com platform that we're working with. So it's that mm. part of Salesforce that we partner up with. And um, Salesforce Commerce Cloud has around 8,000 clients globally. Mm. We have identified that 5,000 out of those eights are a perfect match with our ICP, which is our identical, Id identical customer profile at Bambuzer, which is the enterprise companies. 
Um, so what we have done with them in the first step is to just take away hurdles as integration. So we're fully integrated. So if I'm a customer at, at Commerce Cloud and want to add Bamboozer, then the, it's a very fric friction-free add-on for you to add Bamboozer. Uh, and then over time, of course, we see them being a strong sales channel for us. Mm. I would say this year, I wouldn't say that it's going to come in a year, but we see over time that they're going to be a very important partner, both in terms mm. of revenue, but also in terms of adding you know, new logos to our platform. And then with regards to the one-to-one -one solution, which uh, right now is, is relatively small part mm. of uh, your entire ARR, um, but how should an investor perceive the one-to-one -one solution? Can we expect a similar distribution mechanism like using Salesforce? Mm -hmm. Or is there something else that could work better in the case of one-to-one? -one? Yeah, so with the one-to-one, -one, it's, it's more really about... So I think, you know, a lot of... Um, a lot of people think that you know stores are going to close down. We're going to see, of course, mm, uh, but but we we we're going to use the physical stores in a very different way, and that's where the one-to-one -one comes into action. So imagine every day, if you would go out to a mall or any shop today, it's pretty empty, right? Mm. Because the weather in Stockholm is what it is. But on a normal day, you have hours during the day where it's pretty empty in the store. So how could you use the store and your sales staff to actually sell online? Because normally you would have a lot of more people online than you have in a physical store. So the one-to-one -one is really about integrating into in-store and really using the store staff and, and the inventory you have to ship it. Uh, so we see partnerships, of course, with Salesforce, not uh, cloud commerce, but other parts of Salesforce that are more focused on CRM and booking, mm. but also other partners in, 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 in the infrastructure, I would say, where we can be a part of the infrastructure rather than us selling the one-to-one. -one. And, and we see a huge potential because the one-to-one -one works no matter if you have a very small business or a huge business. Mm. If you just have a store, if you sell something and you want to really give that physical experience, but digitally, mm. then one-to-one -one is a great product to offer. So I think that we see, yeah, great potential and a lot of more partnerships coming up for one-to-one -one mm. and another focus internally on one-to-one -one for us also. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for the presentation as well as the uh, Q&A. And uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you.